What's your favourite documentary? Oh, that's a good question. Obviously, Senna is just an absolute belter of a yeah. film. I mean, that's my favourite, but I probably haven't seen as many documentaries as you have. Uh, like, I've seen a few, but not a huge amount. Yeah. Um, I there's Touching the Void is a fantastic documentary. Um, See, I didn't get to study that one. So that's a really, it. really good film. Did Touching you see Capturing Void... the Freedmans? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. I think that's what we did instead of Touching the Void, then, wasn't it? Yeah. At school. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's some really interesting... Like, have, you, have you seen documentaries people make about themselves? Um... Because how how I've seen Exit Through you... the Gift Shop, which is similar, I guess. Yeah, because uh, there's a documentary so... called um, Tar Nation, right? Uh, which is about a man and uh, you know about his life, and his mother has some really like severe mental health problems, and about how he right deals with with her and their their lives together, and how yeah he copes in his life growing up. And as an adult, and all that, but he so it's you know supposed to be about her, but it's definitely more about him, and it's like an autobiographical documentary about himself, basically. Um, I just find that, that that documentary is fascinating, especially if you then read around it, because he's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm a. Um, He's it's like, oh yeah, I'm a gay man. I've struggled all my life. I've had the, all these suicidal thoughts. And I, I've always been gay since I was 10. And my mum's got these mental health problems. But, you know, as he grows older, he's like dealing with his mum. And, you know, this whole documentary is about their relationship and about getting her to getting her help and all that and about his mental health state as well and all of this. And then when you read up about it, he's actually got like has an ex wife and some kids and stuff. And it's like this isn't <laughs> it's just completely the opposite of how he presented himself in the first place. It's like completely mad about how much people mm. leave out, you know. If you you know, if you then bring that background to Tiger King, how much did they leave out is the other thing. Well yeah, well, and it if looks you like let, quite a lot. Well, yeah, they looks like they left out loads. But then if you leave out everything, you can't really make a reasonable documentary, can you? No. I think it's also interesting to see, like you're saying, with people making documentaries about themselves. Like, I think it says a lot about them to see, the you know, how they portray themselves in it and how they want to make it seem. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's sort of a, a way of escapism, isn't it? And sort of pretending you're someone else. But it, you know, it says a lot about how a person works mentally. Yeah. To fit, you know, to portray themselves in that method. What does it say about them and their wants and their sort of their needs? Yeah. As a as a person of like so so for example, like you're saying, that person is sort of portraying himself with like his, these mental health issues. Is that sort of an attention seeking thing? To you know, because he he idolizes that the way people like. The, the way people see people with mental health issues, is that the way he wants to be seen? In that sort of same, yeah. I guess, sort of pitying way? Or like, right. is it a bravery thing? How you... I don't know. Well, I feel like you should watch that because it's a very, yeah, it's a very interesting documentary. Yeah. You should definitely watch that. So there is another documentary I want to mention that is one of my favourite documentaries because it's, it's, again, a fantastic documentary. It's called um, I Am Not Your Negro. Um, and oh, it's, yes. Yeah. I didn't see it, but about, I heard of it. Right. It's about uh, James Baldwin, who was a, uh, I think he's an author, like a writer. Right. Um, but he was really, really involved in the civil rights movement. And he was like really good friends with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Uh mm. Uh, but he is never like, I mean, I didn't know about him until I watched this documentary and I've studied civil rights in, 
you know, at A level. <laughs> yeah. And he's never mentioned in education at all. It's like, how have I never heard of this man? When he is very important to the, the civil rights movement. Um, also, the documentary is the voiceover is by, done by Samuel Jackson, and it's fantastic. Oh. But yeah, that's, a, again, another fantastic documentary, because that is, obviously, James Baldwin is dead. Martin Luther King is dead. Malcolm X is dead. Medgar Evers, who is another uh, civil rights man, is dead. Everyone who like knew this man <laughs> is either ancient or dead. <laughs> How can you then like you know make a documentary about a man who is this important? Uh, but you know they all base it off like his books and old because he's done a few interviews on TV and stuff. Like that's how they do it. It's like, can you imagine making a documentary about the Tiger King if? Almost everyone involved was dead. <laughs> like, how would you do that? <laughs> well, it's different, isn't it? It's a very different kettle of fish making a documentary about someone who's, mm. or, you know, time quite long ago. So, you know, for example, about James Baldwin, who is dead, um, he can't give a rebuttal or give a, you know, speak about what he, he thinks about the documentary, about how truthful he believes it is yeah whereas but you know in in uh, T tiger king all of these it's almost more confusing because it's all of these different people giving their opinions or you know all these very alive and well people but all of their opinions cross over and it makes this complete muddied mess of of the truth in quotation marks that you've then got to try and unpick and see what parts of it you actually believe. But, you know, it's different, isn't it? But yeah, and if you think about, like... So if you've got a documentary where your subject is alive and you can interview them and get footage of them, and then you're creating a documentary around them and who they are, but if that person isn't alive, then you, all you've got to work on is the stuff that's already been made. So if you're sort of working on the the outline around them and sort of... So it's it's almost like you have to create like it's like a, a next level down in terms of like it's almost like thinking about like a copy of a copy in a way yeah. where you've we've not got the original anymore and you all you've got to work on is sort of the the evidence that already exists around them the sort of the artifacts of their life but not them themselves you have to construct the image of a person based on the artifacts that exist. It's Which an interesting, it's arguably better way to think about it. Well. At least you'll get a consistent vision then, but then it's the vision of the documentarian and not of the person themselves. 